Hi guys and welcome to my vlog. We're looking at the overhead squat and bent over row. Athlete 1 here uh, shows a capacity issue, specifically mobility and stability issue in the shoulders. We can see an unparalleled bar height um, and some shift and some differences in the overhead squat. Actually the lower segment of his squat is pretty good, initiates it by pushing his hips back and sitting into it and can get pretty good depth with the overhead squat. The issues actually arise from the top and problems then work their way down. So as we can see here, as he gets into his squat, there's an external rotation of the right hip and an actual slight lateral shift onto his right hand side and his right hand side squats a little deeper. Now the bar height starts higher on the right hand side due to the differences in his shoulder mobility and tries to compensate for this as he ducks down or descends into the squat. Uh, and the bar, the, the bar actually comes quite parallel at the bottom of his squat, but this is caused by the external rotation and lateral shift. Now we can actually see here with a still frame that I've got uh, the difference in the depth of the knees. So we can see the right is lower than the left. Same with the hips and the difference in angles between the shoulders and the head. Now this problem is because his ability to shoulder flex, as we'll see here in the sagittal plane, is different on either side. We're closer to the head on the right hand side and different on the left. And this causes the difference in the bar height when starting the skill. The capacity issue here is mobility and stability. He struggles at the top because he does exhibit some anterior tilt. You can also see some rib flare there from the side. Excessive lumbar extension and thoracic extension. And we can see here there's a little lateral shift on his head to the right hand side, suggesting maybe he had a stronger trapezius on the right hand side. Here we have some corrective techniques or exercises. We have bent over scaption, uh, reverse flies, and also an overhead squat with resistance band. These exercises are look, looking to improve the muscles involved in the retraction of the shoulder blades, uh, reducing the anterior tilt exhibited, increasing the ability to shoulder flex, and thus the mobility and stability when completing the overhead press, increasing his capacity to perform the exercise effectively. Okay, here we have athlete two uh, exhibiting a skill issue. This is actually quite a new skill um, to this athlete and the change or the rise of the center of mass and the weight change causes all sorts of problems and an inability to execute the skill effectively. Now we can see that there's inconsistency with each squat, no real stability, uh, quite tentative, trying to actually work out what movement is best to execute it. Uh, her thighs don't get near to parallel with the floor and she doesn't get much depth. And we can see from this side view now Heels rise as she descends into the squat as well. Loading up those calves probably because of the change of weight. And this still image shows again that the heels have come off the floor. Thighs are nowhere near parallel. But unlike athlete one, she's able to hold the bar above her head effectively. Now we know this is a skill issue because I've got a video here of her performing the front squat. Uh, and this is done effectively. She initiates the movement by pushing her hips back sitting down into it, she's grounded at the heels, it's anterior tibial translation, uh, and throughout there's a neutral spine exhibited, although her hip elbows are quite low, um, and there's questions there, she's very capable of effectively executing a squat through her body. And this is shown by a still image here. So we can see that there's a definite skill issue here with the overhead squat proving to cause some difficulties because of uh, Thighs here are below parallel, very, very good squatting pattern. Um, and we know it's not a capacity issue, which athlete one shows because she has good shoulder flexion and is able to hold the bar above her head effectively. Here we have athlete two performing the bent over row and exhibiting a skill issue, most likely a compensatory response mechanism for the inability and bad mobility in the shoulders. 
We can see he pulls the bar wide with his elbows and his elbows don't really come high above the spine. When slowed down, we can see differences in the retraction of each shoulder blade, highlighted by the elbow height and the bar height. We can see the wide elbows making the elbow height of the pull worse as they're not coming close to the torso, they're coming out wide, which is ineffective uh, and most likely caused by a resting scapula with anterior tilt and protraction, making it difficult to pull them back further when executing the row. Which is highlighted very clearly here as the elbows don't come very high over the spine. Now weight isn't the issue here. We have him doing 50 kilogram and the same problems arise. He can pull a lot more than this as well. It's just a skill strategy that he has adopted. Now we can see the inconsistency in each rep. The elbows pulling at different heights. The bar moving different heights as well. There is definitely instability, motor control of the muscles involved in, in retraction, uh, specifically the trapezius and rhomboids, to name a few. We can also see there's a kyphotic curve in the back when performing this. And this picture here highlights the differences in elbow height and bar height when performing the bent over row something that can be trained and the kyphotic curve, which is definitely something that I will want to train out of the athlete um, for performance reasons as well as just long-term life health reasons. The corrective exercises used with the overhead squat would also be beneficial for here as we're trying to reconfigure the shoulder blades to execute retraction more effectively. This roll exercise will also have secondary transfer with shoulder flexion and the overhead squat we're just trying to reduce the kyphotic curve exhibited, which will have secondary transfer to the row as well. More specifically for a primary transfer, I've cued the athlete to keep his elbows narrow and to really try to focus on getting them as high as possible when performing a single arm row. Try to improve the stability and strength of the muscles of the shoulder blades individually and trying to cue the skill to be done more effectively and less compensatory than before to increase the effectiveness of his bent over row. Here we can see athlete two, more effectively executing the skill of the bent over row. You see her elbows track nice and narrow and come uh, above the spine a lot more than athlete one. It's a good body position, neutral spine when performing this skill. When we slow it down, again, we can see she exhibits good control of the skill, nice retraction of the scapulae, which athlete one did not have. And she's able to bring her elbows nice and narrow, secure with the bar in a pretty consistent manner. Now, a capacity issue here, as soon as we add 10 kg onto the bar, uh, form changes, you can see her elbows are a lot wider than before and she's adopted a much wide, uh, a much more upright stance. So these two pictures will depict the difference in elbows and the tracking. So we can see that she's not using the same muscles as she's pulling more posteriorly with her shoulders and the upper traps with the wider elbow pull. Now from the side, we can see again at first she's got a very good stance with the bent over row stance. And the capacity issue again when the weight is added is the change of this stance. So we can see she is more upright, her chest is more upright, there's a slight forward shift of weight, her hips drive forward and almost like a, a deadlift she's utilising her lower back just to drive up a little bit higher. Now we can see the difference in, in body stances here when it is and when it isn't a capacity issue, something that we've definitely got to work on. So we'll try to increase the force production of the muscles in and around the scapula, the traps and rhomboids in particular, and we'll try to do this in, in an effective manner with the right stance to make sure she's got the capacity then to, to do the row effectively. In conclusion, capacities and skills are interrelated. As a coach, we've got to keep a keen eye on these uh, as training them and making them more effective will increase the performance of all of our athletes. Thanks a lot.